Hi guys, this is Katie from Creative Travel Guide and today I'm going to talk to you about how to get around Vietnam. So Vietnam is a beautiful place. There are so many things to see and do in Vietnam. And if you can, it is great to try and visit and travel around the country as much as possible. When we first visited back in 2013, we were trying to find the most cost efficient ways of traveling Vietnam. But when we went back in 2019, we only had a week or so to explore Vietnam properly. So we tried to find the quickest ways to get around the country. So today I'm gonna to bring all of that research together and share with you the best ways to get around Vietnam. Number one, flying. Now I'll be honest, I love flying and I know there's a lot of people that don't enjoy it, but it really is the best way to get around Vietnam if you are on a short time period. It is quick, it is easy, and you can get from one side of the country to the other in less than two hours. What is not to love about that? Most of the airports in Vietnam are pretty easy to navigate and all the major ones are really near the cities so you can get to and from them quite easily. Plus, most people think that actually flying is the most expensive way to get around a country, but in Vietnam, you have lots and lots of budget airline options. So we love Vietjet. When we were in Vietnam, we flew with a lot of different low cost airlines. And personally, Vietjet was my favorite. The seats were a little bit comfier. The airline was just a little bit more kind of efficient. I felt like it ran a little bit more smoother. And most of the flights with Vietjet, when I was searching on Skyscanner or on their website, are less than $30. So I would definitely recommend jumping on Skyscanner scanner comparing the prices of those lower cost airlines but also going straight onto the Vietjet Air website because they have lots and lots of really good sales on there as well. So yeah flying is my favorite way of getting around Vietnam but the problem with flying is a few things. First of all you do miss out on seeing the beautiful countryside but you also can't actually get everywhere that you want to. So there are airports in most major cities in Vietnam and there are also airports in smaller towns, seaside towns, that type of thing. But there aren't airports everywhere. So there will be times that you have to fly into an airport and then travel outside of the airport for a few hours to get somewhere. For example, in Ha Long Bay, you can get a cruise around Ha Long Bay. It is stunning, I would definitely recommend it. But the area of Ha Long Bay does not have an airport. So you have to fly into Hanoi and then get the two to three hour like drive to Ha Long Bay area. So that is one of the downsides of flying in and out of places is that they don't always stop or go to the places that you're looking for in Vietnam. So the second best way of getting around Vietnam is by train. Now, I know a lot of people who love the train and in Vietnam, they can be slightly outdated compared to the other trains that you get around the world, but the scenery is worth it. You can actually get a train all the way up the coast of Vietnam and it will stop all of those main destinations that you want to visit. But you also get to appreciate and see all of the beautiful countryside in Vietnam as well. So when we go back to Vietnam and have longer to explore it, I am definitely gonna get the train all the way up the coast because it is something, if you've got the time, make sure you experience it because it looks absolutely beautiful. One thing I will add to that though is that the trains are actually a little bit more expensive than flights these days. When we first went in 2013, the train was a lot more cost efficient than flying, but with more and more budget airlines coming out, it really is kind of depending on what day you're visiting. So make sure if you're going to get the train just because of cost, make sure you're also comparing it with Skyscanner and check those airlines as well, because the train doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be cheaper for your visit. But like I said, the plus side of getting the train is that you can see that scenery and you can get to all of those destinations on the coast that you're looking to visit. If you're looking for more specific information about Vietnamese train travel, then I would head over to seat61.com. It is a really good comprehensive website about train travel and there is lots and lots of information about train travel in Vietnam. It will have all of the places that you can book tickets on in advance, all of the train times, it's regularly updated. So I would definitely recommend that website. I will leave the link in the description below. Another option is driving. Now I personally wouldn't recommend driving around Vietnam but I'm gonna bring it up anyway just because a few people have actually spoken to me about what it's like to drive around Vietnam. Now driving in Vietnam is hectic. There are more motorbikes on the roads than there are cars which means it can be really challenging to get around especially when you're in cities. But once you're on the motorway it's a lot easier to drive so if you are really interested and wanting to drive around Vietnam then there are options for you to do that 
but I wouldn't recommend driving day to day around the cities. It can get very busy, the traffic can get really bad, and it's just quite difficult to navigate yourself around those really busy cities. Alternatively, what you can do is hire a driver. Now, of course, these are more expensive options, but if you're looking to get to somewhere specific that you can't get a train, a bus, or a plane to, then you might wanna just hire a driver. So when we were in Hanoi, we went to Halong Bay and we hired a driver to take us for the three hour journey there. There was four of us. It made sense for us to just hire a driver and get there quickly and efficiently in our own time. What you also can do is when you're in those major cities, if you wanna get around independently, especially if you're there for some time, you can hire a motorbike and get around on the motorbike. And another option to get around Vietnam are the buses. Now, there are two types of buses. There are the local national buses or there are open tour buses do not get the local national buses. They are hot, they are overcrowded, and they are just not that comfortable. If you are looking to get around Vietnam by bus, and this is still really popular, if you go to the major cities like Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, or places like Da Nang, you will often see overnight buses advertised in tour agencies to get from one place to another really cost efficiently. And when we first visited, this was the best option for us because we were able to save money, but also see as much of Vietnam as possible. So if you're on a really tight budget, this is is probably the option for you but make sure when you are booking you are booking with a reputable tour company there are lots and lots of tour agencies around Vietnam and around each of the cities and if they're in a hotel or if they if they have like an actual building generally you can feel like you can trust them or jump online and have a look at options online as well but when you are booking two things to look out for make sure it has an onboard toilet uh, you might not use it but you'll want to have it there just in case and also make sure the bus has air conditioning. I know that sounds ridiculous, but just double check. But actually the buses aren't too bad. I know one of my friends got a karaoke bus once. It was an overnight karaoke bus and she really enjoyed it. A lot of these buses come with beds and stuff like that. And they also have snacks available on the bus. They might not taste that nice, but at least they're there in case you get really hungry. And my last option is Grab. Now Grab is used in Asia. It's very, very similar to Uber, but it is used throughout Southeast Asia a lot. Now you probably won't want to use Grab to get from one city to another, but download the app and use it to get around the attractions and the restaurants that you're visiting whilst you're in those cities. I would definitely recommend it if you're planning on exploring a lot of the cities going here, there and everywhere, because first of all, it is quick, it is easy, you can translate it into English, it has lots and lots of those places that you're looking for, like obscure restaurants even, it will have that on the map because it is generated by the locals in that area, but it also means that if you're leaving a temple or if you're leaving a pagoda and you're looking to go back to your hotel, you don't have to wait and try and find a taxi and try and flag down a taxi and then try and negotiate with the taxi driver to put on the meter instead of doing all of that you can just order a grab and you know exactly when it's going to show up and where it's going so instead of having to carry around your hotel address you can just write the address into that grab app and it will take you to the place that you need to go so those are the different options that you can get around vietnam but i wanted to quickly share a few more extra tips if you are planning on visiting first of all check your visa now some people might not need a visa i know i'm from the UK I did not need a visa because we were staying in Vietnam for less than 15 days but some people will need a visa now you can get a visa on arrival but you need to make sure that you have $20 and a photo of yourself. But make sure you are aware that when you are arriving, especially at places like Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, those visa on arrival queues can get really, really long. My best recommendation if you need a visa, if you've got the time, try and just get it done before you visit. But if you haven't got the time, make sure when you get off the plane, you get to those queues as quick as possible. We were really fortunate because we didn't need one, but I know when we were there, there was a very, very long queue for visa on arrival. Another quick tip is to learn the conversion rate. Now, US dollar is accepted in Vietnam, and actually when we visited in 2013, it was the preferred currency. However, nowadays that has changed. People prefer and will price things in the Vietnamese dong. So you're much, much better off having Vietnamese dong with you and using that. Lots of local restaurants and shops will accept the dollar, but they will convert it in their own conversion rate. So you are probably getting a much better deal if you just use Vietnamese dong. Also something to note about the Vietnamese dong is that they use millions and it can be very, very confusing. So make sure you have an understanding of how much you're paying for things and how much things are worth before you go traveling in Vietnam. Another tip is to look both ways when you cross. Now, Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City are full and full of motorbikes. They are everywhere, especially in Hanoi. You will hear beeping and horns all the time. So make sure when you are crossing roads, you are looking both ways 
and generally the rule of thumb is to keep walking so if you start walking across the road even if you see someone who's going to drive in front of you keep walking because the drivers on the road the motorbikes on the road know how to avoid you but if you just stop the likelihood is they're going to end up going into you because they've already planned how to try to kind of get around you so just be careful be aware look both ways my best advice when crossing a road especially if it's a busy road is to find a local and stick with them so whenever we cross a busy road we try and find a local nearby who is also crossing and kind of stand with them and walk across with them because they know what they're doing and there's a lot less chance that you're going to get run over <laughs> another tip when you're booking your hotel make sure you have a hotel window not all hotels in vietnam have hotel windows and if you look on places like booking.com and agoda the photos will show rooms with windows not always the case if you show up and there isn't a window talk to the manager try and get your room with the window because i know for me i hate not having a window in my hotel room <laughs> a few more things make sure you try the food it is amazing i'm sure we will do another video about that another time but i absolutely love the food in vietnam i would definitely recommend it try everything it's amazing also vietnam don't have a tipping culture you can of course leave a tip if you want to but you don't have to there really isn't a culture for tipping in vietnam at all and my last tip when you are planning your trip to traveling around vietnam make sure you try to visit between december to march the reason being is that the rest of the year is very very hot it becomes monsoon season and the heavens open and it will rain a lot december to march is by far the best time to visit vietnam well i hope you like this video guys make sure you check out our website creative travel guide for more tips and destination guides about vietnam also if you like this video make sure you give us a thumbs up hit subscribe and until next time stay creative bye